Well, you know, this is probably one of the most intractable uh, problems that we've been facing for so long now. I think the onus, the responsibility falls on both sides. But I do believe, however, that the Palestinian position is a probably correct. What they are saying is, if you accept the principle of a two-state solution, then show us that you mean it. And you can show us that you mean it by stopping at a minimum the expansion of existing settlement and not build the new ones. I think that's it's an elementary condition that is necessary for Israel to show its real willingness and to be credible in its posture in, in connection with the whole peace process. If you look at the Israeli position for Netanyahu to suggest that we are ready to sit down and negotiate without any preconditions, as a negotiator I can tell you this type of uh, position absolutely need, uh, lead to nowhere because if there is no preconditions or what we call rules of engagement, where do you begin the negotiation? Obviously, Israel will probably want to negotiate on issues that are not of great importance for the Palestinian, whereas the Palestinian would want to start the negotiation on borders, on the Palestinian uh, refugees, on Jerusalem. So you, you have to establish prior to any negotiations rules of engagement to say, we're going to start with this element, with the second with that element, so that you can make serious progress. That is why I think you know, you ha we are deadlocked now. But it's going to take truly a leadership with vision, with courage on both sides to make that determination and suggest if we really mean it, we're going to have to sit down and negotiate. But I think the prerequisite of ending the expansion of the settlement remain extremely valid. This is more than just a, qu a question of the blockade. It's a question of, the, of Israel toward Hamas as an organization or as a political party. I think the policy toward Hamas uh, is non-starter. It would not lead to any kind of result that could advance the peace process. And Hamas' position toward Israel is just the same. If they continue to hold to their current position, again, that too will not lead to any progress in the peace process. Israel ought to accept simply the premise that if Hamas renounced violence as a means by which to achieve a political solution, that should be enough for Israel to be, deal with Hamas. Hamas in and of itself will have to agree to remove the clause in their charter seeking the destruction of the State of Israel. That is what you ne really need to start with in order for Israel and Hamas to be able to see eye to eye and begin some kind of a negotiating process. The blockade is only a means by which to facilitate some of that. That is, since the rise of the, uh, of the Egyptian government under the Brotherhood leadership, they have an interest in keeping the Ga Gaza quiet. They have interest in the promoting peace between Israel and the Palestinians. Hamas would listen to the Muslim Brotherhood government in Egypt. Israel has now an opportunity to provide some gesture toward the Palestinian, perhaps easing the blockade, perhaps releasing significant number of prisoners, a gesture toward the Egyptian government so that the Egyptian government will be in a better position to say to the Palestinian, okay, this is time to sit down and talk. So Israel needs to make that gesture. If not directly for the Palestinian, it's going to be directed toward the, the, the Egyptian government. And so you need some give and take here on the part of Hamas, on the part of Israel, to be able to begin the process. And so such gestures are going to be necessary before anything else can happen.